All right. Well, welcome to the uh, second ever extra segment that we're, uh, like I said, I'm kind of just messing around with this and see um, if people actually watch it or not. And it seemed like the reception on the other one was decent. So yeah, we'll do another one. And of course, we got to jump in right here. The big news. <laughs> Forget birding or wildlife or photography news, you know. <laughs> this is the big one here in Colorado. Um, fat tire changing for the first time. The recipe for fat tire uh, if you're not from Colorado, you'll know, or you probably wouldn't know, that um, Fat Tire is is a very iconic Colorado beer. It was kind of one of the first ever sort of craft brews back in like the 90s that really broke through and got like popular kind of nationwide. And uh, yeah, it's been the same recipe forever until now. So um, I'll admit, I haven't really drank Fat Tire <laughs> in a long time. I mean, I always liked it, but... Um, we have so many great beer choices here that it's like, yeah, I just, <laughs> fat tires isn't at the top of my list, but, uh, yeah, so it was interesting to see this. This actually made, like, like our news news, like, not just, you know, online, this was, like, on newscast, like, this just in, <laughs> fat tire, it's changing, and, uh, it looks like they're trying to make it a little bit of a lighter beer and a little crisper and easier drinking, and, um, yeah. They say they want to reach newer, younger beer drinkers. <laughs> so, well, what do you know? Look what I have right here. I saw this uh, in the grocery store the other day when I was grocery shopping, and I was like, oh, it's the new stuff with the, the new logo, too. I was like, all right, I got to try it. So let me uh, crack it open here on this fine Monday night <laughs> when I'm recording this. Oh, it's Monday night, and it has already been... The longest week ever. Oh. It's definitely lighter. I can tell you that. Yeah, for sure. And I think they said somewhere in this article, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. It's a new recipe. But trust us, when you drink it, you'll know it's fat tire still. And uh, I'm not so sure I'm getting that. Um, I mean, it doesn't taste bad at all. It definitely is a lighter beer. It's probably just because I've had a long day, and just any beer would taste good right now. But no, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, like I said, I wasn't like, I'm not like a fat tire like fan club or anything like that. I probably haven't drank fat tires since the 90s, but uh, I always did like it, so yeah. Anyways, all right. Well, I mentioned sort of at the end of the video, I wanted to talk about uh, a little bit travel plans have changed a little bit, and um... Unfortunately, uh, the Sag Zimbog. So, I don't know if this was just divine intervention or what, but I had posted the video last, I guess it was about two weeks ago, and I was like, yep, I'm going to Minnesota, <laughs> we're going to Duluth, we're going to the bog, and uh, I was like, yeah, we're locked in, and as soon as I posted that video, um... I, I, I basically had all my flights, hotels, everything all picked out. I literally was just ready to click pay. And um, old Sparky, <laughs> this, guy, this guy is great. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to his YouTube channel and you're interested in birding uh, or you're interested in the Saxon Vlog, you should. He only has 3,500 subscribers, which is a crime. Um, he had posted this video, the world's coldest birdathon. And in it, uh, he had a little update from Sack Zim. And a bunch of people were like, yeah, where's all the owls? Why aren't the owls there this year? Where's all the owls? And he's like, yeah, every winter is basically a little bit different. And this year, there's not a lot of owls. So I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and then I remembered I have a friend who's also big into doing photography, especially owls, who lives in Minnesota. And I was like, oh, yeah, wait a minute. Didn't he post something like a couple weeks ago? So I looked back at what he said, and he was like, yeah, owls just aren't up here uh, this year like they normally would be. So I was like, well, if this is going to be sort of a trip that, like, I'm not going to say it's going to be a one, you know, it's not going to be just like a one-time only trip. But it is a trip that I need to plan out and is going to cost some money. So um, I've decided to cancel the Minnesota portion of that vacation week. 
So I will wait um, maybe until next winter when things maybe get a little bit more normal and it seems like there's more owls up there. But uh, for now, I am going to take a pass on the Sax Zimbog. And I was reading on their little Facebook group here, um, people posting just what they're seeing recently. And there has been a really cool uh, hawk owl up there, which would be amazing to see. But um, I really, I mean, don't be wrong. I would take that. <laughs> I would take a lot of this stuff. But I really want the gray gray. That's a lifer for me. So um, I'm going to wait until the uh, conditions are a little bit better. So um, having said that, we are still going. I'm still doing the Arizona portion. So I am heading to Tucson. I guess that is March 1st through the 4th or 5th, something like that. I think 1st to the 5th That's when I will be down there in Tucson. So I will get a bunch of bird photography in down there, like I said, with my dad. Um, so yeah, that'll still be cool. So I'm excited to, uh, get out there and, uh, yeah, go do some photography with my dad. So, um, that is the update on the travel plan. So, um, yes, boy, these, these guys certainly caused a ruckus around here for about four or five days. Um, yeah, there were short eared owls reported out at Rocky Mountain Arsenal. I will say the location now because they're not there anymore. <laughs> and, um, of course I saw, I started seeing reports come in, um, that people were seeing them and, uh, I knew some people that had seen them. So they kind of gave me a little heads up on where they were. And I was like, Oh man, cool. I'm, I've, I've got to work. Um, <laughs> I've got to work. I always have to work. Um, so I was like, cool. Uh, so basically as the week went along, it was like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I had seen very consistent reports coming in of people seeing the short-eared owls. And then that Friday, there were more reports. And I was like, sweet, I'm going Saturday when I'm off work. And, um, yeah, so I went out Saturday. And um, it was cold that day. Um, so it was Saturday of the weekend of the two days, that Saturday, Sunday. So I guess that was the 28th, 29th, January. Um, Saturday was the day to head out because even though it was cold, it was going to be like two degrees on Sunday the next day. So if you wanted to get on the weekend, Saturday was the day. So I was like, cool. I'm going to see the short-eared owls out at Rocky Mountain Arsenal. Um, so I went out there. I got there about 2 o'clock. And I was driving around the little wildlife loop. And I got to the spot where they had been seen. And there was one car parked there. And a guy was sitting there. And so I pulled up next to him and I was like uh are you just pulled off or are you looking for the owls and he's like I'm looking for the owls and I'm like okay me too he's like okay then I think we're probably in the right spot if this is where we both ended up and I was like yeah I think we are and he's like well I've been looking he had like a big scope um out and he's like well I've been looking and I don't see anything and I was like Okay, well, I mean, it was it was kind of early afternoon, and so I figured they probably weren't going to start flying around and hunting until, like, late afternoon. And so I was like, all right, well, uh, I'm going to go drive around and just try to find some other stuff, and then I was going to come back around. It's like a 11 or 12-mile loop that goes around the arsenal, and you can just do it in your car. So I left and then came back around the loop again about an hour later. And, uh, again, it was just that same guy. And... Uh, Pulled up and I was like, well, did you, have you found him or did you see him? And he's like, no, he's like, yeah, I just don't think they're going to come out until they're probably hidden away back in some bushes. Um, they mostly stay on the ground. They're not like up in tree kind of owls. Um, they mostly stay on the ground. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're out there in some bushes. And then, you know, we just got to wait, you know, for them to start hunting and flying around. And I was like, yeah. So I pulled over and. It was, like I said, it was cold, so I just sat in my car, <laughs> and I kept just looking out. I had my, obviously, my camera with the big lens, and um, next thing you know, it was weird. It was about 30 minutes later, and I hadn't seen anything, and that I looked over, and the guy with the scope is still scanning, like, every direction, and I was like, yeah, he obviously doesn't see him yet either, and um, I was like, well, I'm going to get out and stretch. So I got out of the car, <laughs> I had not realized that, like, 20 other cars had, like, shown up and they were parked on the side of the road and everybody was out with the binoculars and cameras and scopes like looking for these short-eared owls and i was like 
I was like, oh my god, there's so many people here. And um, so yeah, tons of people showed up to try to see these short-eared owls. And um, the weather really came in that afternoon. Like it, it started getting really foggy, and the temperature just plummeted. And I could stand outside my car and look for maybe like two or three minutes at a time, and then I had to jump back in and <laughs> like warm up. And and I started thinking, I was like, man, it's starting to get dark. This we were just in this big fog bank, and I was like, man, even if these guys came out, like I'm never, I, w- I wouldn't even be able to make any images. I wouldn't be able to shoot any good video, I and mean, it would be terrible. So, um, yeah, I sat there for probably about three hours total, and then, uh, yeah. Threw in the towel and uh, left, and I was like, "Well, hopefully, people will see them in the coming days because that way, then we know they're still there. They didn't just like leave." And I kept looking for more reports, like in the days following, and they're gone. So, um, so yeah, like I said, super bummer. I was really disappointed. Um, I wanted to see these guys so bad, and um, yeah, I mean that just. Uh, <laughs> They were there like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then of course Saturday when everyone's off work, they're gone. <laughs> so that is the story of the short-eared owls and um, sort of the miss uh, on those, which uh, again, yeah, it was a bummer. But um, like I said, we've been rewarded in so many other ways this year with owls uh, this winter that it's been it's been awesome. So, um, you know, I probably shouldn't complain, but um, really wanted to see them. But that's what happened with the short-eared owls. I did also want to give an update on, in the last video, I shared a story. Okay, so I'm a fraud. I'm just going to put that out there right away. I am a fraud. Um, So I was saying in the last video where I was doing the Tamron lens review that I happened to show up and there was a Denver Field ornithologist bird outing going on. And so I kind of just tagged along and they were like, yeah, no, come on. And I'd said that I was going to officially sign up for one. Um, and not just crash the party like I did the other day. So I have done that. I have <laughs> I have membershiped up. I have paid my dues. I am going to be amongst them. And I want to share the little field trip that I am signed up for because it will have uh, relevance to um, our little owl series here. So I noticed, I was scrolling through here and I noticed that there was a outing here on February 25th, and Ken Carroll, which is not that far away from me, and it is with David, who was the guy who let me tag along on the last one and didn't, like, kick me out, and uh, we are going on a short evening trip, search for the Northern Saw Wet Owl. I was like, what? (laughs) I'm, like, in Ken Carroll Ranch? So, apparently so. So, um, yeah, we're going to try to see them. Um, A lot of the chance we'll have is probably to hear them um, because they are very nocturnally active. So, um, but yeah, so it is a small trip where I think there's only six people, total eight people. But uh, yeah, here's your boy on the list. (laughs) And there's already five people on the waiting list in case someone else cancels. So yeah, there'll be the eight of us. So I am going to do that. Um, Like I said, I said that I would actually register legitimately so I've done that. <laughs> and yeah, it's to go see a Northern Saw Wet Owl, which I've, I've never seen one before. So that would be awesome. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And then, oh, I said that I was a fraud. So here's the reason why I'm a fraud. Okay, I feel terrible about this. So again, I mentioned last time I just happened to show up at the same time where this group outing was happening. And they very graciously let me tag along. And uh, I kind of hung out with them for like 30 minutes or so. Someone took a photo of the outing. And there's me right here. I'm a fraud. I wasn't even a part of this. Yet now I'm on the cover photo of the whole group. (laughs) I'm like the face of the organization right now. (laughs) That's me right there. I was like, oh, no, you can't use me. You can't use me in this photo. I wasn't even supposed to be there. So (laughs) anyways, uh, I thought that was funny um, that, yeah, I just crashed the party. And now I get to be on the cover of the uh, uh, little Facebook group here. (laughs) But uh, I am very much looking uh, forward to going out 
uh, on the field trip to go try to find the northern saw wet owls. And, um, yeah. So uh, I do apologize. I know this week was a little bit of a shorter episode. Um, but, man, I just I, – I, I, I don't get a lot of time to go out, to be honest, to do as much photography as I wanted or I want to do. Um, you know, I – I have to work the the Monday through Friday nine to fiver. You know, I'm a total corporate schlub, <laughs> and um, yeah, I really can only go out and do photography on Saturday or Sunday on the weekends. Um, I was able to get a lot of stuff in back in January because January still has a decent amount of like holiday days that I get off. So you know, like a a New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, all of a sudden turns a four that turns that into a four day weekend, and there's a Martin Luther King Day, which turns that into a three day weekend. So those are all extra days that I get to get out and try to do photography. But these past two or three weeks, I've just had the Saturday, Sunday. And uh, like I mentioned last weekend, that Sunday, it was like two degrees outside. So I didn't I didn't go. And then the Saturday was spent trying to find the short-eared owls, and that didn't work out. So that was a whole weekend where I didn't really get any sort of content um, to put in the can. And like all the stuff that you're seeing in this episode – it was basically stuff that I shot over this weekend. So, um, yeah, it's really hard to get out there sometimes. You, you, On the few days that I do have to get out, you really have to hope that everything works out. Or else you're going to go home, or I'm going to come home with uh, not a lot of stuff. So, um, fortunately, yeah, this weekend to go see the Great Horned Owls was good. And the Long-Eared Owls uh, were still there, which is great. And they – I mentioned – at the beginning of the video that I I think I left in the clip where I thought that I heard the place where the great or the long-eared owls were had taken some sort of mitigation steps to keep the public away from them. Um, I actually did not see that. Um, but what I did see is that it seems like the owls have moved far enough back off the trail and into the trees is that nobody could get close to them anyway. So I think where they are right now is probably... They should be good to go, and I think uh, they're not going to have to worry about people, you know, like intentionally flushing them out of trees or any of that. Like, at least from what I heard was happening weeks ago. So, um, yeah, that looks like that situation has calmed down and seems it's, like it's good. So, um, but, yeah, I think that's it for this episode. So, thanks again for watching. And, um, yeah, like I said, I'm hoping to get out there as much as I can. Um, I just started tennis back up, and that's on weekends too. So that is always going to conflict with being able to go out and do as much photography as I want. But until I win that lotto, <laughs> I still got to pay a mortgage, and I still got to make a car payment and all of that stuff. So I unfortunately have to keep my job. <laughs> but anyways, um, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you on the next one. See ya.